Kathy Clement with Kathy by Design. I'm so glad you could join me here today. I have a gorgeous winter project to share with you. This is made, this is a really fun waterfall folio with a pocket. I have a tutorial to help you build the base and all the mechanisms that follows this little tour. I've made this with Authentique's just stunning solitude collection. I use the 12 by 12 collection pack, which comes with double-sided cardstock elements that are just stunning. Beautiful patterned papers. You can see I really dug into this and had a ton of fun. But the color palette, these teals and browns and blacks and the pops of red and the feeling of birch bark, all these wonderful plaids that feel like comfy flannel shirts, beautiful patterned papers, snowflakes. This is just one of the most gorgeous winter collections I have ever seen. I just loved working with it. So that's what we played with. This little folio measures eight inches. I believe it's eight inches. Let me double check myself. Actually, this is eight and a half inches by six inches. It has a three quarter inch spine. I've wrapped it with this champagne netting ribbon from Really Reasonable Ribbon. That is the closure. And on the cover, I just created a little vignette with cut aparts from the images. I did some stitching around this beautiful pine tree paper. I added this cloth doily that I picked up at a yard sale. A great way to add elements like this doily to a project is to use Ranger Distress Collage Medium in matte. It really, really holds, but it doesn't leave any sloppy glue lines um, behind on the paper. So let's take a look at the inside. This is a great basic folio to start with. If you've never built a folio, this is a really good design to start with because it's just so simple and straightforward. On the left, you have a wonderful waterfall feature, and on the right, you have a pocket with a folio insert. Super simple, super fun. You can easily make this in an afternoon, and you can make these. These make great gifts. So you'll learn how to create this magnetic belly band closure, and then you'll learn how to add flaps to your waterfall. Um, and again, I've created tuck spots just by gluing down one, I'll just show you. I just glued one edge of this um, component from the 12 by 12 sheet. So you can tuck your photo right under there. These flaps are a great place to add a small photo and then you can do journaling over here or you can mat white paper on this and um, do your journaling over here. I love this argyle print. I see branches and again this is just glued on the side. Another little flap feature. This um, waterfall folio, I should tell you that, the pages are three and a half by five and a half. So you can do three by five photos here. And I think you can do 19 of them or 18 of them in all. And then when you get to this back page, this is you'll learn how to secure this um, belly band back behind this last page. So that's really fun and easy. And then over here, you'll learn how to make this super easy pocket. And inside, I've created this really fun trifold folio. And again, a little flap feature, um, little tuck spots so you can have journaling here but you can also put a photo um, same thing here and you will actually see me make a pretty big mistake as I make this and I'll show you a workaround which it's always good to learn workarounds right um, even seasoned creators make mistakes so I left the mistake in I was going to redo the project and then I thought nope I'm just going to leave the mistake in here because then they'll see that even when you make a mistake, you can find a way to work around it. So stick around. We will start by building the base and you will find at Kathy by Design, I'll put the link to the actual blog post 
in the description panel below where you'll find a cutting guide and a supply list, a linked supply list, and all those good things that you love so much. So grab a notebook and a pencil so you can take some notes and let's get our craft on. We're going to get started building the base for our folio. So to start with, I used a um, heavy craft card stock. You want 85, 100 pound is even better. Um, and you're going to cut this into um, eight and a half by 11. You're gonna cut 11 by six, and you want two 11 by six panels. And you can use 12 by 12, and you can get both of these out of there, just trim it down. So what we're going to do is join these panels along the end to make one big, long panel. And to do that, we're going to use score tape. And you're just gonna take either one of your panels and on that six inch end, right on the very end, you're going to run a half inch strip of score tape. And you wanna keep this as straight as you humanly can because this is going to um, help you line everything up. And I like to use score tape as opposed to a wet adhesive because now when I remove this liner tape, I've got a beautiful line to follow, to line up so that these are going to be perfectly aligned. So start on one end, get your bottoms lined up, and then just follow that tape line all the way to the top. And join and now you've got this beautiful long straight panel of heavyweight craft which is going to be our cover and the next thing you need to do is bring in your scoring tool if you don't have a scoring tool you can use um, a ruler and a bone folder to do this and we're going to score this at eight and a half for our first score line and I want a three quarter inch spine, so I have room to add some goodies inside. So we're gonna skip on down to nine and a quarter and make a second score line. Then we're just gonna fold these. And we're going to tuck this into the corner of our scoring tool as straight as we can. Just check to make sure your spine is straight. And again, we're going to score at eight and a half. And this is going to leave us a three and a half inch piece, which is a little deeper than what I want for my pocket. So I'm going to score this bring in a cutting tool and let's take it down to three. So just put your score line, line it up with the three, cut this extra piece off the end, and now you've got a beautiful pocket here. Keep this piece. We're gonna use this to build the hinges. So just hold on to that piece. For the next step, we're going to build the liner pages for the inside of our album and of our folio. And I'm using authentic blue linen cardstock. It's their artisan cardstock. But you can use whatever you like. It doesn't even have to be blue. And I have cut four panels that measure eight and three eighths by five and seven eighths. And we're just gonna use two of these on the inside. Set two of them aside for use on the outside. And we're going to mat onto these from Authentique, let me see, which one is this? Solitude 8, this wonderful birch bark pattern. And you're going to cut two panels of this that measure 8 and 1 8 by 5 and 3 quarters. So basically, you want an 8 inch border around this. And I'm just going to ink the edges on my... Um, 
birch bark paper very lightly just to cover that raw edge. I'm just going to adhere, and I know there's images on the back, which always makes me sad, but you get two sheets of each pattern in the collection pack, so you will still have all those pretty images that we will use elsewhere in our folio. And I'm using Art Institute Dries Clear Adhesive. I like this because you have a lot of control. Now, you're gonna say, hey, that doesn't match up. I did that on purpose. The reason being, we're gonna build our waterfall detail from this left-hand side over, so I want that little margin to attach my waterfall to. And if we wanted to get fancy, and we might get fancy, you never know. Um, we could do a little hidden pocket back here. Don't put any adhesive from about, let's just make it an even four inches. So flip this over, leave this area at the top open here. Add your adhesive just along the sides, the bottom. You can place more of it here and along the top here. But I use my finger as a stopper. Then we're gonna glue this down. And you do wanna center the blue paper so that you have a nice, neat border. Then burnish this down. And now what we've created there's a little hidden pocket spot back here. Let me open this so I can show you. And we'll be able to put a little insert in there, which is a really fun thing to do. So that's that. Then over here on this side, we're just gonna do the same thing. This time we're gonna let the extra be down here where the pocket is because we don't have to go all the way down there. Does that make sense? When you're working with liquid glue, here's the mistake I see most people use. They use too much they put it too close to the edge and then it glops out all over the place and people go i hate working with liquid adhesive um, i actually like it because it gives me a little wiggle room like i can see right there that's not straight so i can lift this shift my paper and fix that little problem that's harder for me to do with um, score tape or a tape runner so then we're gonna adhere this. Line it up here. And that looks really good. And then just press that down to spread that glue out. Now, when we were cutting, I told you a couple of different things. I told you we were gonna do hinges over here, and we saved a little piece of this craft. And then I've also cut to cover the spine. This does two things. It makes it look nice, and it also strengthens that spine area. And these are just little cut from scraps. This is 5 8 by 5 and 7 8 and I've got one to go on the outside and one to go on the inside. We're just gonna put our adhesive down the center, line this up. And then I also cut from that birch pattern, um, I went down. So instead of being 5 eighths, this is a half inch by five and three quarters, I believe. Numbers are hard for me. Half inch, five and three quarters. And this is just gonna be centered right on top of this blue. Just like that. See how nice that looks? And then we're just gonna do the same thing on the outer spine. Since we've got the pieces and if I don't use them, I might lose them. So I'm just gonna do this very quickly. Center the blue one with the top and the bottom and the sides. And 
and that's that. So for this pocket, so from this little piece, I just eyeball this. This is not high tech. Um, what did we say? This is two and a half, I think. Oops, three. All right, so we're just gonna take this piece of paper. We're gonna fold it in half this way and cut it in half. And then we're gonna fold it in half again. And we're just gonna cut a little angle on the side. And we're gonna glue this onto our pocket. I need to trim that down just a little bit. Like I said, this part is not rocket science. We're gonna glue this down on our pocket with the fold facing out. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to put more into this pocket. So you wanna line it up right along the side, burnish it down with a bone folder. Just repeat this. I mean, you can see I'm not being high tech with this at all. So, and then just line this up. Burnish it down. And then we're just going to come back and add some adhesive along the edges, just like that. Unfold it, burnish it. And that gives us just a little more room in that pocket to add things. And a lot of times what I do is I keep these little binder clips and I just clip those onto the ends to hold that until it sets. So now we're gonna come back over to this left-hand side and we're going to create our waterfall. And to do that, you're going to need to cut 10 pieces of this same blue to measure four inches wide by five and three quarter inches tall. And I was gonna go four and a half, but it uses so much more cardstock. So I decided to go with four. And you're going to score a half inch line on each one of these. So I scored that at three and a half, just because it's easier for me to reach here than it is to reach into this little corner. But your fold is actually going to be on the left. Then we're gonna line this up against this little margin that we created here. We wanna center it top and bottom. Just run adhesive along the back side of that flap where you folded. Burnish that down. If you have any little glue pieces, clean those up. But see now you can't, this looks perfect and we didn't run all the way to the end. So with this open, we're gonna take our next flap and we're just gonna line it up and butt it right up there against the bottom edge of that first flap and burnish that down. Flip it. And you're just gonna keep repeating this process until you've placed all of your flaps.
can see, there's our little mechanism. And we still have our pocket back here for a little insert. So I've got a little extra piece of this cardstock, and I'm going to cut it at three and a half inches on the short side. This is eight inches, we'll just go dead in the middle. We'll just go at four. And then just fold this in half. Burnish along the fold. And this will tuck right back in here. So you can decorate this up with your designer papers. Let me get some things together and we will make the magnetic belly band closure next. I'll be back. The next step is to create our belly band. And to do that, you need a piece of nine and a half by two inch um, of the blue card stock. And I just pieced two pieces together, two scrap pieces with score tape, just like we did for the cover. And then this is going to attach to the back of this last waterfall page. And the reason we have to do it that way is because we can't interfere with our little fun flap thingy here. So how I did this is I just put my belly band in there and then I closed my waterfall. I made a mark, scored along that mark, and this is going to come over here. What I want to do to add a little decorative feature is to take my crocodile and just on the end, use the little stub punch. So to decorate this, I cut two pieces from Authentique um, Solitude. This is Solitude 1, this gorgeous, gorgeous plaid. And I pre-inked the edges. I'm just going to go ahead and cut my stub. I want this one to go this way. And on the inside, I want the reverse patterns. I want the little birds. So cut my stub edge here. Now we're going to peel our liner tape off. We're going to just lift that flap, get it out of the way. Find the approximate center of your waterfall and just close those pages down on that score tape. And you're perfectly attached and centered. Now, we want to add a magnet closure. These are basic gray small magnets. I buy these online. Country Craft Creations has them, I believe. I think you can also find them still at Joanne. So you need a negative and a positive. And I'm going to place this in the center, about a half an inch back from the edge. And then I'm going to take a little piece. This is a trick I learned from Ginger Rop. You just put a little piece of score tape over there to secure that. Then take the positive. Whoops. Okay, there he is. These guys are strong. And he's going to hook here. Remove that liner, which is sometimes the hardest part of the job. And then you're just going to fold this over and press. And that's going to be perfectly placed for those magnets to meet. Then take another little piece of score tape to secure this. And these will be hidden beneath our designer paper. But look, see, it's going to be a lovely magnetic closure. So that's a really fun little feature. Normally, I attach this here, but I had to change that up because of this flap. So I've had it to do over again. I think I'm going to modify this design right here, right now, because I don't like the way that lifts up. So I'm going to place glue. And you know, this is what it's all about. You have to be able to think on your feet. And 
This is all going to be good. I'm going to adhere that. Then we'll add here, and we still have our flap feature, if that makes sense. But I didn't like the way, because look, now it's going to close the way it should. So that was a little design change, live action. That was fun. So find the little birdies, peel off your score tape. Place adhesive on the back. And then just center this. And burnish it down. Flip it. Take our plaid. Same thing. Place our adhesive. Hard to see that blue against that blue. I'm just gonna slip a little piece of white paper in there to help me line this up better. There we go. And burnish that down. Now we have this lovely little belly band feature that holds our waterfall. And there are 10 panels in that waterfall, which means you can put 20 um, 3 by 5 photos, which is really nice and not much space. So this will close like this. Oh, fooey. You know what, guys? We're going to lose that. Well, see, I am human and I do make mistakes. I'm just gonna seal that. We're not gonna have a flap here because it's just not gonna work with that belly band. So seal that up. And we're good to go. So there you go. Human being. I make mistakes. It's still a really great design. So you can only get 19 photos in here because this last one doesn't flip. But it's all good. It's all good. We'll use that for something else. But there you go. There you go. That's that. So you're going to cut your liner papers for this. You're going to go 3 and 3 eighths by... Five and five eighths. So we've got our pocket over here. We've got our waterfall feature here. Now we want to make a little folio insert to go in here. So let me get that together and I'll be back. We'll begin this next step by lining our pocket and I kind of want to keep this all uniform. So I've cut a five and seven eighth by two and seven eighth piece of the same blue linen cardstock to line our pocket. And then from the little bird pattern, I've cut a two and three quarter by five and three quarter. And we're just gonna glue these onto one another. We're gonna mat this. Make sure I get them on there right side up. And then we're just going to glue that onto the pocket. Pretty. Very pretty. Okay, for the insert, I've taken my fifth piece of this blue linen. So you need total five 12 by 12 pieces of this blue linen paper. And this is cut to four and a quarter by 12. 
and we're going to join it just like we did before. You should be getting really good at this now. And I want this to be able to hold four by six photos, which is why I went four and a quarter wide. Furnish that down. So we've got this big, long piece, right? We're going to score at six and a quarter because then you've got four by six for your photo. Then fold that. Go back in the corner. Six and a quarter again. Fold that. And then we're going to have a little flap feature on here. We can make this a really long tab cover and I think it's actually going to look really cool. Again, we're going to add magnets and I always like to do that before I start adding my designer paper. I'm just going to bring in my crocodile again, shape this corner. And bring in my magnets, and it's the exact same procedure. Popping them out is sometimes the hardest part. There we go. Peel the backer off. I'm gonna come down, I wanna be in the center, close to the center, there we go. And about three quarters of an inch from the top, so I have plenty of room to Get my designer paper around that. Then a little piece of score tape to hold that in place. That was a positive, so we need a negative. Peel off that liner. Then we're just gonna bring this down, press it in place, lift it up, and it's perfectly placed. So that's a really good tip. So this is going to fit in our pocket. Really pretty. I like that. All right, so to line this for this front cover, you're going to cut a piece of the plaid to be four and an eighth, and all your things are going to be four and an eighth inches wide by four and a half. And you're going to actually, actually need two of those four and an eighth, one for each side. We want to shape the bottom corners with our punch. And that's going to go just like that. And then we can use the reverse, we can use the birds, four and an eighth. By, what did I say, four and a half. On the inside, this time our little scallops are going to be at the top. So this one will go here. I'm going to cut my papers for the inner pieces. Those are going to be four and an eighth by, I'm going to say six and an eighth, which is absolutely spot on. And you need one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six of those that are four and an eighth by six and an eighth. And choose whatever pattern you like. I'm going to go work on that and I'll be back. All right, so let's put our little folio together here. We already did the cover and the inside. And then I cut panels of the snowflake, the icy branches, a stripe, and the little sleds to line this. If you go four and an eighth by six and an eighth, it means you can only get two 
panels out of each piece of paper. So I went ahead and kept the short panels. But you remember that little insert we made that didn't work out for the waterfall? We're gonna use it here and this is gonna be really fun. So I just covered it with liner paper. Each panel is three and seven eighths by three and three eighths. And on the back of this, I'm going to add my adhesive like this so that I know I'm not putting it where it shouldn't be. And now we're just going to glue this down to our panel. Pull this out. And now this guy, in theory, should slip right inside. How fun is that? So you can do a little journaling here, a little secret spot for a secret photo. Um, that's kind of fun. So that's how we made good on that. Then some of the panels were a little short because six and an eighth left us only with five and seven eighths um, on a 12 by 12 piece. So to fix that, we're gonna do this. We're gonna adhere that short piece down We're going to center it on the top and the sides, just like this. Then I just took a scrap, used a border punch to cut this cute scallop, and I'm just going to add a dab of glue on each side and a little bit along the bottom and glue this down, line it up with the sides. And what we've created is a really cute little tuck spot. So you can put some of those cute images in there, but you still have room for your photo, which is super fun. So that's our little magnetic folio. It folds up like this. I decorated the back. I'm gonna decorate the front just very simply, and this slips into this pocket. Pretty, pretty. We can decorate our pocket here. Then all you have to do here is line your pages. I will work on that and be back in a bit. I just want to take you through very quickly what I did here and show you one little thing. I punched this out from the components, the cardstock components, and just um, used a little sandpaper along the edges to bring out the white core so it has that frosty edge. And then I created a little flap here with one of the three by four cut apart images. And then I've just lined my pages few flaps here and there. You don't want to overdo it with the flaps because if you do, you'll have a difficult time keeping the album closed. But I just want to show you how I did the flaps. So here's a three by four image. As you can see, I cut a half an inch to the left, cut part of that other image off, then scored a line and fold behind. And then you just add your adhesive to that flap place it where you want it on your panel and then glue the panel onto the base. So very simple. But flaps are such a fun little feature to add. Um, and they look kind of magical, like how'd you do that? And now it's just, you see how simple it is. You could easily line this with um, plain cardstock so that you could use this as a journaling spot or you could put your picture here and do your journaling in the blank spot here. But this is just a quick look. I tried to pair up patterns from the collection that I liked the way they looked. And you could certainly go in here, you could add little um, tuck spots, which would be so sweet. And to do that, you would just adhere just the edge so that you can still get your photo or your journaling or whatever underneath. And I won't, you know, you'll see that in the finished album, but I'm not gonna do that here. And then here's our folio, all finished. And I just took one of the three by fours, added it here, one of the punch out hearts, one of the little sentiments, and then this is all done. And then I just took another one of the little punch out sentiments from the component sheet, um, sanded the edges and glued it here. So 
have to do the cover and I'm not going to do a tutorial for designing the cover. I'm just going to design the cover because this has already gone really long. Alright, I just want to show you very quickly how to put the ribbon closure. This is um, champagne netting ribbon from Really Reasonable Ribbon and it's got a really nice organic look. All I did was run two pieces of half inch score tape around the middle, over the spine, and around the front. And then I peeled off the liner tape and pressed the ribbon in. And I like to leave nice long tails here because that makes it easier to go back and then tie the ribbons. Then I put the cover together. So um, I used the pine trees and I did the same dimensions lining the cover that I did on the inside. Um, the same blue cardstock and then I just used scraps that I had left over from the inside double matted on both white and the blue and then just added in all these different elements these are little birdie flowers this is a little woodlands tree um, noble peacock seam binding this is a little wood slice that my son cut me in his workshop some little um, berries from a Christmas arrangement I had a few years ago and threw out and just kept the berries. The wood slice was painted with picket fence. Then I dipped it in um, rock candy distress dry glitter. Then put some glue down in here, this same um, art glitter, and then put white prills in there to look like little snowballs. This is a little rusty birdhouse that I picked up somewhere in my travels and I attached this on here and I made the roof look all snowy and icy with some mixed media. Um, I think there's grit paste and there's something called shaved ice in there. So these are the little Tim Holtz vintage ice skates. I wrapped um, burlap string around the cover. Then just layered all these elements up. This is a doily I picked up at a yard sale. So all that sort of thing. This is just stuff I had in my stash. And now what we're gonna do is try to lay this as flat as we can. And one of my little snowballs fell off and try to attach this to the cover. And then really we're finished. Um, you could go any direction you wanted to. I chose to go with the sort of woodland look on the front. But if you wanted to keep it more like a snow day, you, there's some really cute images for that as well. And just want to really add adhesive along these, the string because sometimes that's where it won't adhere very well. But this is why I like to save this for the last because it's dimensional and... You don't want to you don't want to damage it while you're working on the book. It's also easier to lay the book flat, the folio flat while you're if you leave the cover to the last thing you do. All right. I think we got it. So now we'll just tie this bow. It's easier if you leave the tails long um, to tie a bow. I mean, if they're too short, it can be really tricky. And I may trim these a little bit because they're super long, but I'd rather have too much ribbon than not enough. So I'm just gonna fold this in half. trim my tails. This is so pretty. The champagne netting, it is perfect for this. And there you have it. You did it. I hope you hung with me. Um, this was kind of a fun one to do because we changed the design as we were going along. I made some mistakes and recovered from those. Um, it's good for you to see that that happens so that when it happens to you, you don't panic. 
I just want to thank you so much for joining me. I will have a supply list and a cutting guide on my blog at kathybydesign.com. So if you want to stop by there, I'll link that below in the description. Again, this is Authentique Solitude, the most beautiful winter collection I think I have ever seen. It just is stunning. So go have fun, get your craft on, and I'll see you later. Bye.